While most mechanical keyboard enthusiasts these days love their small form factor keyboards, especially for all the space they open up on our desks for our wide swing moves when gaming, sometimes we might wish we could snap our fingers and bring back the full-size keyboard numpad back. At least during those times when we actually need to input a lot of numbers on a spreadsheet, for example. Enter the discrete numpad, a rather old solution to a problem that only laptop users had back when almost every keyboard was full size in the earlier days of personal computing. But now, after years of no innovation in the almost forgotten mechanical numpad category, the booming trend of small form factor keyboards, brought about by the gaming and custom keyboards hobbies, is finally starting to change that. And that is why Glorious Gaming, the peripherals company formerly known as Glorious PC Gaming Race, and which has been disrupting the PC peripherals industry for three years in a row, now has its sights on the discrete mechanical numpad market. After their insanely successful GMMK Pro launch in 2021, Glorious now promises to reinvent the concept of the numpad by adding some of the same functionalities we've come to expect from modern mechanical keyboards, such as hot swappable switch sockets, wireless connectivity, keys remapping, macros programmability, RGB backlighting, and even hardware volume control for specific applications. So today we're going to give an in-depth look into the brand new GMMK numpad, its build quality, features and customization options, and try to answer if this $130 peripheral is something you should consider adding to your setup. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Bring your DIY projects to life with PCBWay's printed circuit boards, prototyping, manufacturing, and assembly, as well as their CNC machining and 3D printing services. Check the link in the description below for more information. Hello and welcome to IOSAM. I'm Sam Franco, and this is a channel where I do tech reviews and show you how to build, fix, and mod all sorts of computer gear. Today we are taking a first look into the intriguing new GMMK numpad from Glorious Gaming. As those who have been around this channel before already know, that is a product category that I have been quite fond of, and I have been using these types of peripherals for a very long time. And as such, I think I can help you decide if you should consider a discrete numpad or macro pad for your workflow, and if the GMMK numpad should be your first choice. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. And then, I'd like to point out that we do things a little different around here. My videos usually go a bit deeper in analyzing all possible aspects of the products I review, including potential improvements to the product's shortcomings, as well as price, value, and availability considerations. And that is why I break my videos into neatly organized chapters with progress bars on the bottom and top of the screen to help you quickly navigate my videos in case you're looking for something specific. As a disclaimer, Gloria sent me this review sample free of any cost for the sole purpose of producing this video review. But that has zero influence in how I review the product and all opinions voiced here are my own. I will place affiliate links for most of the products and tools shown here. And if you buy anything out of those links, I might get a small commission without any additional cost to you. But while these affiliate links do help to support this channel, they do not affect my content in any way. The GMMK numpad is a fully programmable numpad that can also be used as a macro pad. It has dual wired and wireless connectivity through Bluetooth 5.0 and USB-C and up to 76 hours of battery life in wireless mode. It is very well built with aluminum gasket mounted plate and chassis in either the black slate color I have here or the white ice version, which might be white or silver. It also comes with sound damping foam between the PCB, the plate, and the case bottom half. It comes ready to use out of the box with Gloria's own factory lubed Fox linear switches, pre-lubed GV2 stabilizers, and thin double shot ABS keycaps. But as a hot swappable pad, you can use any MX compatible switches and keycaps in it. It has not one, but two volume control options, a knob and a slider. On the software side, it is compatible with Glorious Unified Driver Glorious Core, which is what you're probably already using if you bought any of their keyboards and mice released in the last year or so. Through this app, you can remap keys, create macros, configure the RGB lights and the pad's three layers and three independent profiles. There, you can also check its battery life and update its firmware. The GMMK numpad is QMK compatible, but no word on VIA compatibility though. In the box, you get the numpad documentation, an USB-C cable, two basic switch and keycap pullers, extra gaskets and screws. The GMMK numpad comes with Gloria's standard two-year warranty. It costs $129.99 MSRP, and Gloria's is opening pre-orders today in the US with expected shipping in early September. 
If you're watching this video, I take a wild guess you're into custom keyboards, right? So, if you ever decide to go from a keyboard consumer to a keyboard designer, you might want to check out PCBWay's prototyping, manufacturing and assembly of PCBs, as well as their CNC machining and 3D printing services you might need to produce keyboard cases and plates. Regardless if you need to produce just a few PCBs or even a single prototype board, PCBWay is a one-stop shop that covers everything you need from PCB fabrication to assembly. And if you're a small business in need of more advanced PCB manufacturing techniques, PCBWay has you covered. They offer a wide variety of custom options for your project, as well as some of the most sophisticated PCB manufacturing options in the market, such as multi-layer, high-density interconnect, flexible and rigid flex boards, thick GEMs, and SMD stenciling. All built within short turnaround times and with the highest quality materials, sourced from the most trusted suppliers in the industry. Check the video description below for more information and for $5 off your first order. And huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for supporting the keyboard hobbyist community. As mentioned in this video's introduction, the advantages of having a discrete numpad are pretty clear for anyone who has a small form factor keyboard and who has the need to quickly input long strings of numbers. But a discrete numpad can also be useful to left-handed users who might prefer to have the numpad on the left side of the board. When used as a macro pad, the GMMK numpad can also be useful as a content creation aid on the left side of the main keyboard to clear up space for mouse movements or for a Wacom tablet, for example. For my particular case, I like to keep a wireless numpad out of the way on the top right corner of my keyboard for situations where I may need to quickly type a phone number, a numeric pin, or a two-factor authentication code, for example. But then I like to have the ability to quickly relocate the pad closer when I'm working with numbers, which is the kind of option that you can't get on a full-size keyboard. So, using a discrete numpad is one of those things you don't know you need until you try. The layout here is exactly what you have on a numpad of a full-size keyboard, but with the addition of a knob and a slider on the right side. And here we might have the first questionable decision by Glorious, since they could have added an additional row of keys that could host delete, backspace, tab, or even a dedicated FN key to help you quickly access functions on a secondary layer. But instead, they chose to go with the box standard 17 keys layout. I can see their reasoning here, since anyone who has been customizing their keyboards in the last few years probably has hordes of leftover numpad keys from all those keycap sets we overpaid for piling up somewhere in their closets, since many of today's hottest mechanical keyboards don't use those. So it was a smart decision in that regard, since I can see a lot of people getting excited to finally being able to put those forgotten keycaps to good use. But I think Loris forgot that the same people who have loads of numpad keys in Ziploc bags also probably have a bunch of novelty and even artisan caps they could use to fill up an additional row of keys. The build quality of the GMMK numpad is basically on the same level of what we got on the glorious GMMK Pro keyboard, which makes sense, of course. The case is the same style of a rectangle on a beveled wedge with no visible seams between the top and bottom halves. The black anodization here is slightly smoother than the GMMK Pro, but still grabs fingerprints just like the Pro does. It uses the exact same knob size than the Pro and has the same side lights design of the newer GMMK line, although the case has rounded corners that better match the GMMK2 instead of the squarish lines of the GMMK Pro. As with the Pro, you have a fixed 5 degrees angle with no height adjustment. Here, they included a nice chrome badge with their new logo carved out, which looks really classy. Gloria says they'll offer other options of badges that you can replace, but at least in my review unit, I could not figure out a way to remove the stock badge without damaging it. So I'm not sure if this is a problem just with this pre-release unit or not. On the topic of screws, Gloria's learned a lesson from the GMMK Pro and they did not come over tightened. So it was really easy to remove them with the wall stick. But they also include extra screws in the package in case you ever damage or lose the ones in the pad, which was a smart decision. The PCB attaches to the plate with six screws and uses Glorious own hot swap sockets, which like the GMMK Pro are five pins compatible, SMD LEDs for per key illumination and for the side light bars. The USB-C port and the Bluetooth toggle are in the daughter board fixed to the bottom case and connects to the main PCB through a JST cable. The pad has only six keys roll over, but that is more than enough for a 17 keys numpad anyway. The GMMK numpad offers dual connectivity with either wired USB-C or wireless via Bluetooth. It supports a 3.7 volts, 1200 milliamp hour battery, which Glorious claims can last up to 72 hours, depending on your use pattern and RGB configuration. 
but it does not come with a 2.4 GHz dongle, which would likely have a bigger impact in battery life than Bluetooth. While you can use this pad with two computers, one via USB-C and another via Bluetooth, you have to unplug the cable before the Bluetooth connection takes over. You're limited to a single Bluetooth connection at a time, which is a disadvantage when compared to the similarly priced Kailong GK21S that can simultaneously connect to up to three computers, phones or tablets via Bluetooth, and which you can select through keyboard shortcuts. The wireless connection seems pretty strong, considering this pad is fully enclosed in a metal case. At least in my small office crowded with wireless devices, I didn't notice any connection issues. When using it in its wireless mode, the pad will need an extra second to start registering inputs out of its hibernation state, which can lead you to miss the first character, a problem my GK21S also has. The lighting here works pretty much exactly the same way than in the GMMK Pro, where you can either choose from a list of predefined presets or create your own per key scheme, and then assign different lighting schemes to each of the three layers within each of the three profiles. In the Glorious Core app, you can also choose to have different brightness settings for wired and wireless modes to help you save on battery life. The Glorious Core app you need to configure this numpad is good, but not great. It has improved since the release of the GMMK Pro, but it still lacks some much-awaited features, such as the ability to configure the volume knob to do other things not related to sound volume, such as scrolling, lighting controls, right and left arrows, etc. But at least the things the app can do, it does fairly well such as keys remapping, macros recording, and RGB controls, which are all relatively easy to do here. Not as easy as VIA, though, which continues to have the easier and most intuitive keyboard configuration interface out there. But considering how flaky the GMMK Pro's VIA compatibility has been since its launch, I would not nurture any hope to have the numpad working well with VIA either. I'm sure the community will eventually figure out ways to make this work with either VIA or VIA-L, the open source alternative to VIA, but I don't expect Glorious to put too much effort behind these initiatives since they obviously have a vested interest in having us using their own proprietary software, which a lot of people using other Glorious gear, such as their mice and keyboards, are already using anyway. As for how to use Glorious Core to program macros and RGB lights, I'll leave a link below to the specific chapters that cover those subjects on my original GMMK Pro review, where I went into much more details on how to do those things. The process here is exactly the same. Compared to the GK21S notoriously difficult to use GK6X software, I definitely choose the Glorious app. I'll leave another link below to the specific chapter where I covered the GK driver configurations in detail on my review of the EpoMaker AK84S, which also uses the same GK6X driver. Just like the GK21S, the GMMK numpad will save to its local memory whatever key maps, macros, and RGB lighting schemes you create in the software which means you can even uninstall the Core app after you configure the numpad and then use it in any machine and it will carry your program layers and RGB effects along, which is really nice. And a quick note about compatibility with Apple devices. The numpad will work perfectly fine in macOS or iOS in both wired and Bluetooth mode, as long as you use a Windows machine to personalize the configuration if you want to change anything beyond its default state, since Glorious does not offer a Mac or iOS version of its driver software. The knob and the slider for audio volume control are some of the main features of this numpad, and probably the first thing you'll notice when looking at it. Now, while volume control might not be a killer application for you, their implementation here was more useful than I thought it would be. In my setup, for example, I use an external DAC and a discrete amplifier for my headphones and another DAC amp combo for my speakers, which means I keep my Windows volume at 100% at all times and control volume using the knobs on these amps. So as you can imagine, a volume knob in a keyboard is not exactly useful to me. But the super interesting thing about the slider in the Jim MK numpad is the fact that I can assign the volume of a specific application to it, such as the audio from a browser or from Steam, OBS, or Discord, among other apps. Now, all of a sudden, I found myself with a quick volume control for my YouTube videos in Chrome, for example, without affecting the system volume of other apps I might have running at the same time. And the possibilities here are intriguing when you think of how you could use this feature when gaming. 
where you could assign your Discord comms to this slider and quickly adjust or mute the volume from chat without affecting the volume of your game. Or by assigning it to OBS, and now you can adjust the volume from your live stream through the slider without affecting the game's volume. So as you can see, this tool can be very useful depending on your use case. The numpad comes stuffed with thick foam, both between the plate and the PCB, and between the PCB and the bottom case. And the foam they're using here is much more dense than the one I got on my original GMMK Pro, which will help to keep pings and rings under control. The plate of the GMMK numpad, believe it or not, is gasket mounted. I'm not sure anyone actually needs their numpads to be gasket mounted, but hey, I'll take it. As a result, this numpad has no unpleasant noises when typing no rattles and very little ping sounds, since the plate is isolated from the case with no metal-on-metal -metal contact. The stab situation with the GMMK numpad was interesting. As anyone who followed Gloria's famously flawed goat stab story during the launch of the GMMK Pro, we remembered that it was probably the biggest problem with the first batches of that board. So early this year, Glorious announced the updated version of their stabs, the much better named GV2, where they implied the problems of the previous model had been addressed. So here the stabs seemed fine out of the box, with no rattle and no excessive lubricant on the wires. My only issue with them happened with the horizontal stabilized key when I tried different keycaps with thicker walls, such as with multiple PBT and ABS sets from Drop. With these thicker and heavier caps, that particular stabilized key would get stuck at the bottom and wouldn't return. Relubing the stabs with Crytox Grade 0 and XHT BDZ seemed to work well when the stabs were tested on the PCB, but wouldn't work when the plate was installed. While I couldn't really figure out exactly what the problem was, I suspect that it is either a misaligned wire or maybe the stems are very tight within the housing, which could then get choked depending on the tolerance on your chosen keycaps mounting holes. In any case, this was only a deal breaker in one of the three stabs, while a second one became a bit sluggish only with the MT3 set, but not with the others. And all these problems only happened with the aftermarket caps. The stock caps worked fine out of the box. So I ended up replacing the sticking stabilizers with a KBD Fans Clear set I had here, a leftover from my KBD67 Lite, that worked perfectly fine in that position with any keycap. Having said that, the good thing of the GMMK line is that they are relatively easy to open and replace their stabs, and doing so will not void your warranty. The stock Glorious Fox Light Linear switches included with the GMMK numpad are actually pretty nice. They come with a thin layer of lubricant from the factory and feel notably smoother than Cherry, Gateron, or KO Reds. If you like light linear switches with around 45 to 50 grams of actuation force, you might not even need to spend with aftermarket switches. And the fact these switches are completely clear means they don't block or tint the RGB backlighting, which is something I know a lot of you will like to hear. The included keycaps are neither the best nor the worst backlit keycaps I've seen in a production keyboard. These are double shot, so they are miles better than the laser etched crap Logitech still puts in most of their keyboards these days. But these are ABS and definitely on the thin side, which makes them sound a bit plasticky and cheap. While I wish Glorious had used something nicer here, I'm sure they quickly figured that most people who buy this numpad will immediately replace whatever stock caps they have for those fancy GMK, JTK, EPBT, Domi key, or any of the other dozens of premium ABS and PBT sets people have been buying for the last few years, in which they never use the included numpad keys that come with those kits. And as you'll see in here later, replacing the stock keycaps would definitely improve the looks and the experience of using this numpad. The numpad measures 12 centimeters in width, 11.3 centimeters in depth, 2.1 centimeters in the front side, and 3.2 centimeters in height on the backside. The typing angle is a fixed five degrees when measured on top of the third row of its stock OEM profile keycaps. It weights 482 grams in its stock configuration, or shy of one pound and one ounce. It is fairly heavy for its small size, and it comes with very grippy feet, so it will stay anchored at your desk. I tested this keypad with a few different combinations of switches and keycaps to see what would feel the best for me. As a point of reference, I have been using my GK21S for about two years now, outfitted with lubed Zeo Aqua Xylan tactile silent switches and the keycaps of a Ducky Pocket RGB numpad that I used before, but that failed on me a few years ago. 
For the sound and typing field test with the GMMK numpad, besides the stock configuration, I tried it with the following combinations. Stock Glorious Fox linear switches with drop loop putting V2 double shot PBT keycaps. Stock Silent Linear Gazoo Boba Gum switches with drop Skylight PBT rose caps. Lubed Gazoo Boba U4T tactile switches with GMK Nathlock Kaiju ABS caps and stock KO box wide clicky switches with drop MT3 Dasher ABS caps. So let's hear a quick comparison between these configurations. Okay, first let me say that in a numpad, I'm not particularly interested in soft and bouncy plates. I get it that there is an argument to be made for those things on a full keyboard, but not on a numpad in my opinion. In any case, while I don't think the gaskets in the GMMK numpad did anything to make it softer, it definitely made it sound much softer and nicer than the GK21S. There is basically no rattle on this thing which I really appreciate. The sound and typing feel in the stock configuration were good, but nothing spectacular. As predicted, the thin cap sounded a bit plasticky and let a bit more of the switch's sounds to come out, the good and the bad. With the pudding keycaps, the sound changed a tiny bit, but was still sharp and high pitch. I'd say the main reason to go with these thicker PBT pudding keycaps from Drop, or the equivalent ones from Glorious, which look and feel exactly the same, is just the RGB aesthetics, if that is something you like. Then, with the stock Silent Gazoo Boba Gums and the PBT Rose Skylight caps, I could see how much better the GMMK numpad sounds with silent switches than my GK21S. The Loop Gazoo Boba U4Ts and GMK Kaiju set is also a super nice combo with this numpad. U4Ts are my favorite tactiles, and you can't go wrong with GMK's thick ABS and sharp double shot legends. This configuration sounded very poppy, as one would expect with the U4T's long stem sound. And finally, my favorite combination here was, surprisingly, the box white clickies with the beautiful MT3 Dasher. I know, clicky switches are not for everyone. And in fact, for most of the time, they're not for me either, since I don't like Cherry MX Blues and other click jacket style switches. I mostly appreciate clicky switches on old vintage Alps bass keyboards, such as the ones I showed in my last video about the new Zeo clicky switches that you can check up here. But I just found out that on a numpad, there is a case to be made for good clicky switches, such as the box whites. Something about the audible feedback and the sharp tactility when typing each number that I can't quite explain why I like it so much. But I would never use this configuration in an open office, since that would definitely get me in trouble. But let me know in the comments what was your favorite configuration in terms of look and sound. So, what are my conclusions about the GMMK numpad? First, I have to say that I love the fact Loris decided to release a product like this. I know I am extremely biased on the subject, given my dependency on numpads for so many years now. But putting that aside, I'm happy to see a company known for offering high-performance products for considerably lower prices than most of the competition to develop a product in a category that has seen so little attention and innovation up to this point. While the Jim MK numpad is obviously not a perfect product in this version 1, I think it is a very good first step in what is sure to be a long-standing product category 
that can only evolve and get better with time. As for typing feel and sound, while these factors are much less important in a numpad than in a full-fledged keyboard, I'm happy to report that the Jim MK numpad fared very well here. You obviously can make it better if you replace its vanilla switches and keycaps, but the fact that you get a fully operational product out of the box and that you don't have to wait for switches and keycaps to arrive in the mail before you can start using it, it's pretty nice. For a product facing so little competition in the market today, I have to give glorious props for coming out guns blazing here. This is a really nice product that feels high quality, is beautifully designed, and which takes advantage of Gloria's growing experience with premium production keyboards. This thing is built like the proverbial tank and should last a very long time in your desk. It looks super sharp and it packs a lot of nice features. It is not perfect and my experience with the GV2 stabs here when using aftermarket keycaps still leaves something to be desired. But as we'll see in a minute, it easily beats the little competition it has right now despite that particular issue. In terms of price and value, this product is in an interesting position. While $130 is definitely not cheap for what amounts to a half keyboard, let's not forget that while discrete numpads have existed for decades, the market for super premium mechanical ones is still very much a novelty. As it is usually the rule in any tech product category, if you are an early adopter, you'll pay more money than people who join in years later when that category has already matured and scaled. Having said that, compared to the existing competition for readily available premium programmable numpads, Glorious is offering more features and more value than anyone else at this moment. At this time, I can only think of two direct competitors to the GMMK numpad that you can easily buy without going through a long-winded group buy. The first is the KBD Pad Mark II from KBD Fans, a wired-only aluminum numpad kit that costs $83 plus shipping for a kit with no switches or keycaps and with a solder-only PCB. By the time you add up the price of the kit, basic switches, keycaps, assembly service, and shipping, this pad will cost you around $135. The second option is the Skylong GK21S Bare Bones Wireless Kit that you can get from Ipo Maker and other Asian resellers for $99 plus shipping. It comes pre-assembled with FR4 plate and decent plate-mounted stabilizers that can be easily improved with basic mods. This has been, until now, possibly your only option for a premium aluminum-built wireless hot-swappable numpad kit and will be the GMMK numpad's main competitor. But here again, by the time you add the cost of switches and keycaps, you'll also be close to $130. So it is no coincidence that Gloria's price their soon to be readily available premium numpad for, you guessed it, $130. While the KBD pad probably has the more premium built and is the only one with VIA compatibility out of the box, it is also the least convenient for not being hot swappable and not having Bluetooth. Meanwhile, the Skylong GK21S has very similar features and build quality to the GMMK numpad, but it has a much worse software. Between them all though, I'd say the Glorious option probably wins out in the feature set for this price range. In the availability discussion, that might as well be one of the strongest points for a Glorious product, since they have consistently kept their products in stock even throughout the pandemic and chip shortage crisis we're still reeling from. Say what you will about Glorious, but one has to admit these guys know their logistics. So by the time they start shipping the numpad in the US in September, you can expect to get it in about one week within the continental USA. And who is the target market for this product? I think it would be fair to say that the total addressable market for this numpad is anyone who has bought a premium custom or semi-custom TKL or a smaller mechanical keyboard in the last few years. I'd even venture to say that if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're right smack in the middle of the target market for this product. And just before I close this video, I just want to make a quick comment about Glorious as a business, since I know they have been a bit of a controversial player in the mechanical keyboards hobbyist community because of some of their questionable decisions in the past regarding products naming and other accusations about the originality of their designs. And I know that a lot of entrenched members of the custom keyboards community out there obviously don't like to see a well-funded corporation taking over their hobby. But that is an entirely different conversation for another day. Putting the drama aspect aside, it is hard to argue the fact that Glorious consistently delivers decent quality, high performance products, while at the same time undercutting pretty much all the big PC peripherals manufacturers out there in price. In other words, it is hard to beat Glorious in the value argument. And if you're just someone who wants a decent home office and gaming setup with high performance peripherals and you're not made of money, it is hard to ignore that aspect of what Glorious brings to the table. On top of that, we can also appreciate companies that stand behind their products with a good warranty. 
which is something I can't say I've experienced with lawyers in the past and something that can't be ignored in a consumer-oriented business like computer peripherals. And now, I'll throw the ball back to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below or in my new subreddit I'll link below. Do you use a discrete numpad? Do you see yourself spending this kind of money to get a premium one? Meanwhile, if you want to check my attempt to build a brand new keyboard in 2022 that can sound like a vintage Alps-based keyboard from the 80s, check it out right here. Or click here to see my recent review of the awesome KBD67 Lite. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.